These days, we have electronic devices everywhere in our lives, from our mobile phones to laptops to TVs and even calculators. At the core of these devices is a component called the microchip. These microchips are a powerhouse of electrical activity which leads to huge amounts of heat developed in them. To manage the heat, a flip chip package design is commonly used. In this video, I will show you how to design a model within Abacus, a flip chip package. So let's sit back and relax as we get started with this modeling. Hello, my name is Dr. Michael Okreke. Welcome to CM Videos, a YouTube channel where we we'll try to help you create effective computational modeling solutions to any computational problems that you may be having. So the outline that we're going to work with in this video includes first, I want to introduce a concept of a flip chip technology because this is really important and at the core of what we are trying to do today. Now, I want to then show you how to create a virtual domain of this within Abacus. And then after that, we'll look at how to actually set up the model to run. And finally, we'll try to analyze the simulation result that we generate from our simulation. Okay, the reference publication that we're going to work with is a publication that uh, a student of mine published a few years ago, and this is it. So please do find this if you want to learn more about this. So the first electronic fleet package design that we want to look at is something that has been around for quite a long time. It's one of the oldest technologies, and it's called the wire bonding technology. So let's consider this is a, a silicon chip, which usually will be the microchip where all the electrical activity is taking place. Now, it needs to be attached to a substrate and that substrate will then need to be connected to the PCB of the device. Now, the easier way is to use a wire to bind the top of the silicon to the substrate and then to make effective connection and heat exchange, you introduce a copper tab. So this is the principle essentially of a wire bonding technology. And this is a practical example showing what is really happening with a wire bonded technology. So this is a silicon chip and then this is the wire that binds it to the base of the PCB board. And then somewhere underneath there, you have a piece of the copper tab that binds the system together. So it's an old technology, it's not a very effective for heat management. Now, the one we're really interested in this video is a flip chip technology and we'll explain what it basically is. So again, we've got our substrate, that substrate that get bonded onto a PCB board. And then from the substrate, you've got the silicon chip. However, the silicon chip is slightly differently designed in this case. So you've got the sealed soda balls right at the top end. And then underneath the soda balls, you've got some contact tab. But however, you need to flip the design so that you can then make connection with the substrate. So this is where the idea of flip chip package. So the traditional design of the silicon chip has to be flipped. And then from that flip, it makes connection back onto the substrate using this contact tabs. Now, in this case, the advantage here is that you have the whole top of the silicon chip completely free. So that then from there, you can then connect any kind of other devices to make it easier for heat management. So that's the design of the flip chip technology. Now, to also help with the solder and the bonding, an epoxy underfill has to be introduced to kind of bind the silicon chip to the solder board, covering all the solder balls together. Now, this is a practical example of what this will look like. So you kind of see the silicon chip right at the top and then the solder, the underfill connecting the system on the side here. So that's the design of a silicon chip. So it's very clear, the top end is very clear and it's a flip flip pack package. It's a nice package design and it makes for heat management to be properly handled. If you're finding value in what I'm sharing, please do consider clicking the like button and sharing you know this video and if you haven't subscribed if this is the first time of being here please do subscribe and finally i just want to highlight that i've got a cm video inside that group it's a group where i try to tell a little bit more about cm videos about the videos that i make you know behind the scene of cm videos and also where products are available i also share discounts for for people to use so if you want to get to know a bit more about me please do consider subscribing to that cm video inside that group now, the next thing to think about, remember, we're looking at heat management using this flip chip package. Now, the heat management would normally happen using a heat sink. So right at the top end here, we've got a heat sink and that heat sink has then to be bonded onto the microchip to make for effective heat conduction through the device. Now, the beautiful thing with the flip chip package is that the whole top of the chip is absolutely clean. And so you can make 
they connect this heat sink directly onto them. And so this is what we see next here. So if you think about our design of the flip chip package, so this is our design of the flip chip package. And because the whole top end is completely free, we can do something with that. And so what we need to then do is to connect a heat spreader. This heat spreader is basically a component that connects heat directly from the silicon chip onto the heat sink. So it's a heat spreader. It usually will be made of copper, you know, because of the high conductivity of copper. And then after that comes the heat sink. So this way you've got the whole top completely clean. And so there's effective heat conduction from the silicon chip directly to the heat sink, making the energy dissipation to be excellent. So this is a beautiful thing with it, but there is a problem here. You need to also introduce something called a soda thermal interface material to make connection not only to the silicon chip and the heat spreader, but also from the heat spreader to the heat sink. So why is that important? And this is because the surface asperities between the heat sink and the heat spreader or the silicon chip and the heat spreader is never, never completely flat. And so imagine like shown here, if you try to make connection between these two, there would be tiny gaps and every tiny gap would reduce conduction. And once conduction is reduced, so heat management is compromised in that system. So in order to prevent that, what we then need to introduce is a soda material. So when you bring the solder thermal interface material in between here, then the next thing you're going to see is there's a perfect connection between the two of them. Now, for our purposes here, what we are going to try to model is the first stage of this design with the silicon chip, the solder thermal interface material, and the heat spreader. The, maybe in future videos, we can look at modeling the second stage of it, which is the conduction from the heat spreader to the heat sink. If you want that kind of video, please tell me in the comment section of this video. The conduction pathway is essentially from a hot chip, which is a heat silicon chip, and then onto the cold, which is typically the environment where the heat sink, you know, is pointing out to. So that's the conduction heat flow associated with the system. Now, the next thing is about this soda thermal interface material, this bonding agent is that it's typically prone to voiding due to the reflow process required in creating the bonding. And so the void will also impede heat conduction. If you're going to then do a model that is effective, you need to accommodate for the effects of these voids. The heat conduction pathway would be modeled using Q, which is a heat flux per unit area associated with the system. So just to pause for a moment, this is your question for the day. If you're working in this area of microelectronic devices and heat management associated with them, I want to know what current modeling challenge are you grappling with? You know, the kind of things that I'm modeling here or maybe a different kind of problem. So please let me know in the comment section of this video and I'll consider that. And that could be an inspiration for a future video. So thank you for doing that. Now, in modeling the system, in modeling the system, the dimensions that we're going to be using will be a three component system of a flip chip package. And these are the dimensions associated with this. I've taken this dimension from the paper that I referenced to earlier on. So we have a domain that looks like this with the silicon chip at the top end here and the steam layer that is voided. So you can see the voids in the steam layer in the middle. And then at the base here, we've got the copper heat spreader. The materials that we're going to be using are given here, you know, with the conductivity densities and the specific heat. The case study that we'll be looking with at for this study will be a void volume fraction of 20%, you know, with the diameter of the void specified and the total number of 12 voids. And the temperature at the silicon chip being, you know, 85 degrees. We want to model in the case where the environmental temperature is 20 degrees, so typical room temperature, and the steam layer thickness will be 0.12 millimeters. So again, the components identified in the way they need to be. So our conduction heat path will be from the very hot silicon chip onto the environment where the heat spreader is located. The final thing that we need to also do in trying to understand the effectiveness of, of the silicon of the steam layer is to quantify the thermal resistance associated with this. And there's a formula that you can use in calculating this. So where the thermal resistance R subscript SA is equal to the temperature at the source minus the temperature in the ambient times the heat flux and the area of the chip. So if we then consider that, so that means we are looking at what's happening around the silicon chip. So this basically, you get this, this kind of behavior and then the area of the silicon chip is basically the area of the steam layer minus 0.25 NF pi DF squared. So we're going to go into Abacus and I can show you how this modeling can be carried out. I got this weight on my shoulders, slowing me. 